Five E is a is a is a really good game, and it's it's very easy to, and very fast to make a character, especially if you if you have fantasy grounds like I said. So, a uh, couple things first, you need to make sure that you have your in your library you need to have the modules activated. So we'll uh, Arborhawk Velcor, good to see you guys. What's up? Go to your library really quick if you're new. And I'll also be answering a couple of questions toward the end of the stream as well. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and save them till then. Because uh, when I'm doing my instructions and tutorials, I'm pretty much just going straight through that. And then at the end, I always uh, answer some questions. So go into your library, which is in the lower right-hand corner right here. Right over, there we go. Right uh, over my right shoulder. And you can just click on the library button and you'll see that in the lower left hand corner of the library interface there is a modules button. A lot of people forget to activate their modules whenever they are a player. So hit the modules and then whatever your DM uh, allows you to see you'll be able to it, they'll have a green check mark so I've, I've already got everything activated that I need. Uh, of course you know you can do a search down here at the bottom uh, if you have any class packs, if you have the player's handbook, say for instance you have uh, uh, Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, Player's Guide, the Dungeon Master Guide, Player's Guide, Xanathar's, etc. You can activate as much as your DM allows you to see. Unearthed Arcana, Elemental Evil's Player Guide, there's all kinds of stuff. Curse of Strahd. So just activate whatever you want to activate and here you can see in your module section well in your library I have all of this activated but we'll go through we'll uh, we'll activate a few more so let's open this back up and we'll we'll activate uh, everything that we can have access to that our dungeon master has allowed us to see so let's uh, hmm what do, what do we want to activate let's load the Sword Coast Adventurers Guide for players Let's load Unearthed Arcana. That's already loaded up. Let's do the uh, Elemental Evil Player's Guide. That gives us a bunch of optional elemental based spells. Let's see. I'm looking for green check marks pretty much. Class packs we've already got with the Player's Handbook. Ooh, look at that. Morning Kynans. Ooh, look at that. Uh, <laughs> what did I. Player's Handbook? <laughs> Uh, the character customization that's part of the player's handbook that is multi-classing so we've got the player's handbook uh, let's see there's the uh, the tomb of annihilation for players we'll activate that we're just basically going for for everything player based so here's the xanathar's player's guide I'm on a Mexican radio. That's such a great song. It's such a such a one hit wonder. I had that's why I had to play it before uh, I started the this, this stream up. I think that might be about it, everybody. I think that might be about all of the the five E stuff. Well, there's a lot of stuff, isn't there? I think that is it, everybody. I am trying to look through this as quick as I can. Oh, we'll do the turtle too. I think that's it. Yeah, looks like that's about it. So we've got all of our modules activated, as you can see, in our library. There we go. We have all of this data, and we can access it from... We can access it from here in the library. Or, like what I'm going to do, I'm going to access it from the uh, sidebar buttons on the right-hand side. And I have all of those activated. And if you, it, by default, there's only about, uh, I think there's about eight of them, eight or ten. So what you can do is go into your library, and up here you have a all of the different buttons here. It's like an a la carte. You can just select what you want. You can have GM's mode. You can have a selection of buttons for player's mode. Or if you want to create PCs or like what I do, I just turn them all on. I'm like, hey, what the heck? I want to have all of that data at the, uh, the tip of my fingers. So I've got all of that stuff now. And let's go ahead and make a PC, shall we? 
You can create a character sheet two different ways. And, you know, just because I show you one way of how to do something in Fantasy Grounds, in a lot of cases, there are multiple ways to do things in Fantasy Grounds. And the longer you use this program, the more proficient uh, your skill will become with the program and the more shortcuts and the more different ways of doing things you'll learn. And over the years, I've, I've learned so many different ways to do many different things. And it would just take so long to show you every possible different way to perform every single type of action that you want to do in Fantasy Ground. So ah, that's how awesome the program is. So let's go ahead and, and we'll create a, create, create a character. You can do this two ways, and I'll show you both ways. Nice, nice try, Arborhawk. You, my friend, you just got... A yellow card for that. I'm breaking out the yellow card. Uh, there you go. You get a yellow card. My chroma keys mess with it, but you, sir, are on a yellow card now, Arbor Hawk. You're fixing to get a red. <laughs> I had to do that. I had to break out the yellow card. But it's actually white because of the chroma keys. So, all right. Two ways to uh, create a character sheet. The, <laughs> the first way is to hit the edit list button and you can just hit the green positive button. It says add item and bam, there you go. That's one way that you can add a character sheet or you can do it just by right clicking and hitting create item. I just right click create item and you can do that for pretty much anything. Spells, tables, story journal entries, monsters, anything. You can just right click in the interface and voila, you'll have it uh, pop up. So for this video today, we are going to do a, no, that's an automatic red right there, Benok. You know that. We're going to go ahead and create a cleric today. So the first thing that, uh, there's really no systematic way of doing it, but I have my own preferred way of doing it, just like I'm sure you all have your own preferred way of doing it. The way that I do it, it does not make it the end all be all in the correct way. Like I said, Fantasy Grounds is very flexible and you can do things many different ways. So I'm gonna close up my character selection and I'm gonna keep my character sheet over here on the left and I'm gonna keep all of my uh, entries up on the right hand side. So the first thing I wanna do is I, I want to, seeing that I'm going a cleric, I, I kinda, you kinda wanna think about what you're gonna do. Are you, are you gonna go a traditional type of cleric with uh, healing? Do you want to maybe you want to go maybe a Tempest Cleric, like my Cleric Splug, where he has a lot of lightning spells. Maybe you want to go Pure Life. Uh, you can be a Healer Cleric. You can go War Priest, which is the melee-based type of Cleric. And there's all kinds of other domains and all of the other supplements. And I'll show you guys how to choose those in just a second. So for this, uh, seeing that we get our Archetype at level 1, I want to go ahead and do... I think I'll go ahead and I'll do a, uh, hmm. I think I'll do a traditional life cleric uh, because they are, you know, you don't have to have a cleric in a party for fifth edition. You know, 5e is very, very, very flexible uh, for, for party makeup. But I, I want to go with a cleric because it has an archetype at level one. It also has uh, spells at level one. So that's why I kind of want to show you guys uh, for the first video something that, that has everything early on. So let's uh, let's choose uh, let's see what let's choose our ability scores. You can do this two ways. You can there's all kinds of different ways to roll your scores. There's 3d6 straight down from strength to charisma. There's uh, you know 4d6 drop one. I've seen 5d6 drop two. I've just seen uh, plain 4d6. There's all kinds of different ways that you can do ability scores, and that is totally up to your game master, whatever he or she wants to do. There's also the 27 point buy that you can do in the player's handbook in chapter one where there is character creation. So we are gonna do uh, a 27 point buy. But if you wanted to roll stats, you can do this. If you say we'll do 46, uh, keep three, all you have to do is just pick up your six sided, hold down the left mouse button, right click three more times, there's your four, and you just roll it. Or you can just, or what you can do also, what some people do, they'll just take this and drag it down in their macro bar. And then you'll see there's 46, and then you can just hit, you know, macro number one, 
And look at that. You shoot dice up, and it produces all of your stats for you. So that's one way you can do it. But like I said, I'm going to be doing a 27-point buy because as you see, I don't roll very good. So let's let's do a let's do some 27 point buy so it's pretty much one for one up to a 13 and then it's two for one after 13 for 14 and 15 uh, so you can't you can't start anything uh, naturally through 27 point buy over 15 so I want to go with uh, something pretty basic I want to go with 15 15 15 8 8 8 so even though there's tens in there by default you'll have to switch them to eights but I do want a strength for 15 I want to go ahead and do a 15 con and I want to do a 15 wisdom because we are going cleric and then my dexterity and my intelligence and my charisma will be eight so that's 27 points because it costs nine points for 15 points of strength nine points for 15 points of con and nine points uh, for 15 points of wisdom thus nine times three is 27 so we're good to go there we have our stats now uh, let's go ahead and choose our race. What 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 type of race do we want? We know that we're already going to go. We're already going to go with the cleric. So the next thing I do is I always choose my race because the when you drag and drop the race onto the Fantasy Grounds character sheet, it will automatically add your ability score bonuses. So now that we've already got our 27 point by easy peasy, we just drop the race onto there and then it'll add the the plus one or plus two. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at all the variety of races that we have, and uh, let, let's open up our races. You can hold down Control, and you can open up this interface. So here's all the different races that we have. Uh, there, there's some that we don't have from Volos. So it looks like I missed Volos. Let's go back into our library, and we'll open up our modules again. Which I kind of did this on purpose because I wanted to show you the, the search feature. There you go. There is Volo Guide uh, to Monsters for Players. We'll load that in there. And then now you'll see that there is a whole slew more of races in there. These are pretty much all of the, the evil type of races. So we have everything from A to Z here. Everything from Air Crocra down to Yon T. So, you know, the, the thing about making a character for 5e, it's such a player-friendly game. Min-maxing really doesn't matter. Some people like to min-max... Uh, some people just like to, you know, if you want to play, if you want to play a gnome cleric, go for it. If you want to play a gnome fighter, go for it. If you want to play a dragonborn wizard or a dwarf wizard, go for it. There's no race and class restrictions in 5e, and that's the beautiful thing about it. So don't worry about min-maxing. Play whatever your heart is content playing. Uh, so we're just going to go right on down the line. I think I'm going to go with a... Uh, I'm gonna make a hobgoblin cleric. I mean, how many how many hobgoblin clerics do you see in games? Not many. So let, let let's open this up. We're gonna we're gonna take a, and drop the hobgoblin on here first, and we'll see that. Uh, let's see for ability score increases. It looks like we'll get two for con, which is good. It's gonna help us, and our intelligence will go up one. So our intelligence will go to 9, con will go to 17. So let's drop a hobgoblin, which is not the it's not the cookie cutter type of cleric, but that's okay. That's not what I'm going for here. The you know, the thing is to play whatever you want to play that's going to make you happy because you're the one that's playing it on a weekly basis or on a session basis. So we've dropped hobgoblin hobble hobgoblin on there. <laughs> And you can see everything in the chat that you got. So there's our 9 on intelligence and our 17 for con. So perfect. We are ready to rock now. Okay? We are ready to rock. So let's uh, close out our races. We have got our hobgoblin ready. And I wanted to I want to open this up too because you can also you can also read about the the races also that you have. So let's hold down control and move this. Um, really not a lot for the Hobgoblin, it looks like. But, but see, it was one of those optional races. But a lot of races, you can open it up and it'll have all the lore and the story and stuff like that about it. So uh, we've got our age, our alignment, all that stuff uh, will be added, like dark vision. Um, you know, you'll get, you get martial training. So you're going to be proficient with two martial weapons of your choice and light armor. Because, you know, usually when you see hobgoblins in a monster manual or, or miniatures, they usually are two-weapon fighting, and they've got on, like, a medium armor, like hide or something like that. 
So let's see if that added up to our uh, to our sheet. So we get to, yeah, we have our, our traits here, our racial traits, martial training. We get to we get to add some, uh, we get to add proficiencies. Like I said, you get uh, two martial weapons of your choice uh, and light armor. We'll come back to that. Uh, you also get saving face, which hobgoblins are careful not to show weakness in front of their allies for fear of losing status. If you miss with an attack roll or fail an ability check or a saving throw, you gain a bonus to the roll equal to the number of allies you can see within 30 feet of you. That's pretty nice with a maximum of 5. So if you needed a DC 15 and you rolled a 10 and you have 5 allies around you within 30 feet, voila, your DC goes up to a 15. That's pretty nice saving face. And then once you use it, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest, which is really nice. Uh, I'm glad that it's short or long rest. Because it actually, it, it kind of helps out having it because, you you know, most people will, most groups will take a short rest, usually after after a pretty uh, pretty tough fight. Okay, so let's, let's see. Let's go ahead and close out our race stuff. Uh, let's choose now. Let's choose our background. We're going to be a cleric. Why don't we just go something uh, basic and go with a maybe an acolyte? So we'll uh, open up our backgrounds, and you can see here's everything, all of the different uh, reference material that we have. Everything from acolyte all the way down to Zenterm agent. So we'll go with the acolyte, and you can just drag and drop that onto your character sheet. Voila! It tells you everything in chat. You can go to your abilities tabs, and you can see that you got Shelter of the Faithful. Uh, we can also use Control, and we'll we'll open up uh, we'll open up the Acolyte a little. You can read all, everything here. You'll get Skill and in Insight in Religion, and you can look at your your character sheet on the Skills tab, and you'll notice when you drop your background on there, the uh, skills that you get for this background will automatically. Uh, be added. So you can see that there's the proficiency star for insight and also for religion. And you get to choose two more languages of your choice, which you'll be able to choose those down here on the skills tab. Nope, the abilities tab. So we already get common and goblin. So let's choose two more. Uh, we'll say we'll take a, we'll take elvish and then we'll take a, let's see, draconic. All right. So we've got some equipment that we now get, and we can just easily, I'll show you how easy it is, uh, how to add equipment to your character. So in the, on the sidebar button over here on the right-hand side, you can click on the items button, and that will have all of the, all of the equipment from all of the different modules that you have activated from the player's handbook, from any source that you have. So you get a, a holy symbol. So we'll just, everything is uh, very searchable, very easy to search for. You just uh, type in holy symbol and you can just drag and drop it. Uh, let's see, holy symbol. We'll just take this, drop it on equipment, voila. You get a, a prayer book. So we'll just type in book. Uh, let's see book of plays there's all kinds of books spell book i think we will take this and then we'll just add prayer on there all right uh, then you also get five sticks of incense so you just search for incense all right so where is our incense all right. You can scroll down and, and look alphabetically. There's 50 items on every page. There you go. There's incense, uh, one block. We get five. Then we, and, and you know what? I'll, I'll say this. When a lot of people make characters, you know, they don't even look at the equipment. So when you make your character, make sure you get your starting equipment from your background. Because your, your starting equipment you get from your background, you also get your weapons and armor from your class, uh, and that's your equipment. And you also get a little bit of money depending on which type of uh, background that you choose. Now also in Chapter 1, there is a, a way that you could just take a set 
uh, amount of money where you can do like 40, 10 uh, times five or something like that, but usually you end out missing out. So I really recommend taking the starter equipment from your class and your background. I really do. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can find some investments in here. There you go. Like I said, it's so easy. You don't have to. You don't really have to type anything with Fantasy Grounds. It it uh, really takes care of everything for you. So here's our common clothes, and then we get a belt pouch, uh, and then we also get 15 gold. So we'll just uh, close out our items. We'll come back to that for our equipment. We'll put gold here, and we'll put 15 because we start with 15. And then we get the feature shelter of the faithful, which is right here where you can go to uh, different uh, uh, churches or temples, and you can get some assistance that way. And you can click on these little red dragon heads, and this is the dragon head from the ampersand symbol, and you can just click that, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about that particular uh, line of, of whatever you're, you're looking for. Okay, so now we've got... We're on a roll. We've got our, our race done, our background, our ability scores have been adjusted. Now let's choose our class. And this is this is the bread and butter about making your character. It, it really is. So we're going to go with the, the cleric, like I said. And the great thing about Fantasy Grounds, whenever you choose your character, whenever you drag and drop that onto the class line, the system is going to ask you what skills do you want to choose out of such and such skills because as you know making a character in 5e thank you for uh health thank you so much for the uh, for the twitch prime sub totally appreciate it sir uh now when you guys make a character you guys know that you get to choose x amount of skills out of this list of skills well it's been programmed it's been hard coded into whenever you create a character you'll get asked those same questions so uh, let's go to our classes here is our our, our our classes everything you'll and you'll notice that sometimes there will be multiple classes and this means that these these barbarians are from the the player's handbook so it will be the bear the totem the the totem warrior and uh, the the berserker barbarian uh, the Xanathar's Guide, it'll have the Barbarians from that. Uh, the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, it will have the Barbarians from that source. So uh, you will have multiple classes, but that's okay, because each one has different archetypes. But whenever you create your character, the system will recognize all of the different supplements that you have active or modules. And whenever it's time for you to choose your archetype, say at level 1, 2, or 3, because just about every class is different, you'll have the choice from all of the different supplements that you have active. And you can also create custom classes as well and link them in too. So it's a little bit of legwork, but hey, it's possible to do. So let's take our cleric from the player's handbook because we're gonna choose the life cleric and we're just gonna drop that right on this. And when I drop it on there, look at that. I get to select my skills now. I get to choose two skills from the list below in which your character will become proficient in. So remember, with our background for Acolyte, we already got two skills. We got Insight and we got Religion. And Insight and Religion are already on my list, so I don't need to choose those. I mean, it would, it would we would be shooting ourselves in the foot if we chose Insight or Religion again, right? So I'm going to choose two from History, Medicine, and Persuasion. Medicine, that's a gimme. I want Medicine for sure. Uh, now do I want persuasion? Maybe I can talk my way out of things. Or maybe I want history. I, I, I usually think that there's enough to where you can do some common history checks without being proficient. So I'm going to go with persuasion. So I'm going to check that. And now I've chosen my two skills. And you can see that the check mark hit. Uh, it lights up OK down here. You hit that. And look at that. It adds medicine and it also adds persuasion. So now I'm proficient with four different skill checks, which is nice. Two from my background, two from my class. Now, here is my increased specialization because the cleric gets to choose an archetype at level one. The fighter and a lot of other classes, they have to wait till three, but 
what's cool about the cleric you get to choose at level one so and you can see here there is a ton of different domains which in the player's handbook there are still i think there are seven domains for the cleric i know that the uh, the knowledge domain the life domain the light domain the nature domain the tempest domain the tricky domain trickery domain and the war domain so it looks like everything from arcana yeah, the first seven here, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, Tempest, uh, down to Trickery and War. Yeah, so there's eight. And then after that, like the Forge Domain, the Grave Domain, and all the, and the others, those are from different supplements. So whatever you have active, whatever you have, whatever modules and supplements you have activated, this specialization for your archetypes will detect that. So you can choose all of those. You can choose one, whatever you want. So you don't have to go into, oh, I know there's something in Xanathar's that I like, or I know there's something in this book that I like. So that's the nice thing about Fantasy Grounds. It pulls everything into one source for you. And that was with the, uh, I believe, the 3.2 patch. Uh, I think that went in. No, I think that might have went in actually way before 3.2. But but anyways, it's, it's a nice feature. Uh, so we're going to go with the, like I said, uh, we're going to go with Life Domain. So you just select it, hit the OK button. Voila, you'll see in chat all of this stuff has been added. And now we are a level one cleric. Uh, let's name him. Let's name him Warnerv. And we'll select a, a little avatar or portrait for him. You just click on the gray box. And uh, let's see. Let's go to D&D, 5e. &D, uh, let's see. Hobgoblin. I don't know if there's going to be any hobgoblins. Maybe there's something in the others. We will we'll make this Furbolg uh, a, a, a goblin, but you can make your own as well. You can make your own portraits, uh, and you can go to the folder and just click on that. And when you click on the folder, it will open up your, your uh, Fantasy Grounds Portraits folder, and you just put it in there. And next time, you just choose. So why don't we just choose, uh, let's choose Sloth. I like Sloth from the Goonies. That, that will be our avatar for our Hobgoblin. <laughs> so, there we go. Uh, so you can see in our on our skills page, we've got our skills now. On our abilities, we've got all of our features from being a cleric, life domain, shelter the faithful from our uh, background. We get spell casting at level one. We have all of this stuff that we have on our on our ability tab now so it's, it's like you don't even really have to type anything and i like that there's a couple things we'll have to go in maybe make some effects we'll also maybe need to uh add in the double proficiency for uh martial training uh, and we may have to do something for saving face but i mean that's uh, most of the leg work's already done for us now uh the other tabs there's your inventory tab you've already seen this there is a notes tab and the great thing about this is we can drag and drop all of our personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. So let's go back really quick. Uh, I should have done this before. So let's open up Acolyte, and then we'll go back to our Notes tab. And here, here we go. Here is all of our uh, traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. So what we can do is just open up these, and you can random roll these with the roll button right here, or you can just drag and drop them right in to the uh, the boxes and I mean it just makes it so easy and then you just go to your ideals pick which one you want you drop it in there you don't have to type it your bonds uh, I like this one I'll put in there I'll just drag and drop it right onto the bonds line the flaws the same way I like that you can uh, appearance I am the lands most beautiful hobgoblin and you can just you know you can put any kind of notes notes for your background story here's all of your uh, gender your your age your height your weight your alignment your if you have a deity uh, up here in the very uh, bottom your actions this is where uh, the magic will happen with combat so you'll have your spells here you'll have uh, all of your your different uh, weapons your anything else that you want to have effects for like class features all of that stuff we'll come back to that uh, your log is pretty much for uh, adventurers league which is really good a lot of people play adventurers league 
so you can go ahead and and keep track of your 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 journal here and then you can export this character and take it with you to maybe an online convention that's playing al or you can print this out take it to you to a con like what i did with uh, my cleric a couple of weeks ago at el paso con uh, so yeah this character sheet has everything for you so let's go back we've we've now done our uh our traits ideals bonds and flaws we just dragged and dropped those right in there uh, we'll just go with like a neutral alignment uh, we'll say that the deity is Mordrin. Um yeah we'll say Morden. he's my favorite deity in all of uh, d and uh, age we'll say that he's a uh, 34 and we'll say he's a uh, six foot and we'll say he's like 150 pounds and then you know there's also all kinds of in, in each of the books it'll give you all of the different age range weight ranges height ranges and all of that stuff too now back on the name tag uh, name the main tab you'll notice at the very top it is INSP that means inspiration you can hover over it and of course inspiration is a is a major mechanic in 5e and you just go ahead and click that and whenever you're in the game your avatar will be in the left hand top left hand corner your avatar will have a yellow star that means that you have inspiration and then when you take the inspiration off you go ahead and just unclick it and that star will disappear so good to go now let's go ahead and we will do next our equipment from our class so let's go back to cleric we'll click on this now this has all kinds of information if you're going to do like multi-classing stuff like that but that's okay we just want to open up the cleric and get the data from from the cleric so what we want to do here folks is you know your class why don't you go ahead and take this red dragon and utilize the macro bar down down downstairs so just take this and drag it down there and then voila your cleric information is there and anytime you need to oh I know I get something for the cleric you just click on your macro bar down here whatever it is you just click on it or hit F4 in this case is F4 and your cleric uh, will pop back up and you should really utilize the macro bar the, the macro bar is such a such a great tool to where you won't have to go back in and look for things so here is the uh, image for the cleric. I love this image. Actually, one of my viewers uh, imposed my face on here, and it looked amazing. So, uh, wow, I, I couldn't believe that, uh, and I like that piece of art. So here's everything that you get. Here's your matrix for first level. You get spell casting. You also get your divine domain, which we took life. And you can see that you took life here. And also when you open that up, you can go ahead and hold down control and open this as large or small as you like and here's all your your spells that you get for your domain your domain spells here's all of the other features that you get at first level seventh level and eleventh level etc so now let's go back and, and look for our equipment here's your spell slots uh, voila your equipment you start with the following equipment in addition to the equipment granted by your background there you go so it tells you don't forget about your background as well like a lot of players do so I want a Warhammer which I will be proficient because uh, you remember I get uh, all simple weapons but then again I get to choose two martial weapons as being a hobgoblin very nice but as a life cleric you also get proficient with uh, some other armors I believe so we'll look at the bonus proficiencies for life uh, when you choose this domain at first level you gain proficiency with heavy armor so that's good our armor say light armor medium armor shields and we are going to type in heavy armor as well because we do get heavy armor because of the life proficiency so now I can wear stuff like chain mail and all that other good heavy plate half plate stuff like that so let's uh, let's choose a warhammer. We're going to go back into our items, and we'll just uh, we'll just type in hammer, and warhammer will pop up. We'll go to our inventory tab. We'll drop it on there, and when we do that, make sure that it is equipped. These little toggle buttons on the right hand side. The bag means that you are carrying it, and the 
chainmail shirt or the armor shirt means that you have it equipped. So when I drop the Warhammer on there, on my actions tab, it shows you, voila, there is your Warhammer. It has your uh, proficiency and your to hit already calculated in for your attack. And it also has your damage as well, which is really nice. Now, the, the Warhammer is a bludgeoning weapon, and it shows that I'm proficient. Versatile is 1d10. So what we can do is make another one of these Warhammers. If we decide to be using it as a two-hander, we can make another one of these, and it'll still be plus four to hit, and then it'll be 1d10 plus two instead of 1d8, because as versatile, you get to use it as a two-hander as well. Very nice. Okay, so we've got uh, our first thing chosen. Uh, we can choose scale mail, leather armor, or chain mail. We are proficient in chain mail. So let's go ahead and choose chain. We'll just type chain in there, uh, chain mail. We'll drop it right onto our, uh, we'll drop it onto our inventory tab. And the same thing with the, the chain mail. It auto calculates, this is a pretty new feature. You'll see that my AC is now 16. All right, very good. So now we've got 16. Now we can choose a light crossbow or 20 bolts or any simple weapon. Uh, let's go with a mace. I don't, I don't really want to use a, a crossbow. We'll go with a, uh, we'll go with a mace. And uh, here we go. We'll drop this onto the, the inventory. And voila. Now we've got our mace. It is also equipped. And there it is showing on our actions tab now too. Next we get a, a priest pack, an explorer's pack, and a shield and holy symbol. So we've already got our holy symbol because we got a holy symbol from our, uh, our background. All right. Now, uh, we also get to get a shield. So let's go back uh, and choose shield. All right. Let's add that to our inventory. And you'll also notice that your AC will go up two more because it adds the two for shield in the shield box. So at level one, we've got an 18. Pretty nice, an 18 armor class. That's pretty good. And then lastly, but not least, which is really nice, we're going to choose an Explorer's Pack. Now, when you choose the Explorer's Pack, of course, there's a lot of things inside of this Explorer's Pack, like there's uh, the backpack, a bedroll, a mess kit, a tinder box, uh, 10 torches, 10 days of rations, a water skin, 50 feet of rope, all that good stuff. Now, uh, you'll notice that when you take that Explorer's Pack, it's going to break that pack up into all the different individual items so you don't have to take each one and drag it on there. So check this out. Voila, look at it. It adds all of it. It says, look, you get, uh, uh, yeah, here's your, your mess kit, your rations, your rope, your tinder box, your torches. So it takes that Explorer's Pack and it breaks it up. It's beautiful. So now we've got all of our equipment. And now... Our character is pretty much done, guys. Our character is done. So it took, you know, and, and I'm explaining this as we go. So it literally only took me 30 minutes to make this character. The only thing we have left to do is choose our spells. And that's it. And that, that's right at about 30 minutes. I mean, that's just, that's just absolutely, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Sure beats the days of making a character for three hours, huh? All right, so let's choose some spells, shall we? Go back to Cleric, and we'll go to our spells. Oops, sorry about that, I got a call. So what we'll do is we'll go to our spells. Sorry about that, I should have had my phone on mute. All right, so we want Cleric spells. So we want, we want some cantrips, so we're going to go with level zero. How many cantrips do we get as a Cleric at level one we get three cantrips at level one so let's choose three zero level spells so we have our spells here we'll open that up a little bit and we'll choose the source and we'll just go with cleric so we have all these spells to choose from here's a couple from xanathar's uh, so what we'll do is we'll take three uh, we'll take some uh, we'll take sacred flame just in case we need a range attack 
Uh, we will take spare the dying because we're a life cleric. We're healing, so if anybody's down, uh, we can stabilize them with spare the dying. And then we'll also uh, take some resistance that we can give us to our other party members. So that's that's all you do, everybody. And you can see that all everything is parsed out for you. So the two buttons on the very bottom are very important. So I, I suggest you going to uh, go to basically standard mode and also actions. And you'll notice that every spell like Staked Flame or Guiding Bolt or Guidance or whatever that has any kind of mechanical importance, that is pretty much parsed out. For the most part, all of the spells are parsed out. So it has, here's our saving throw. So you would just take this and uh, drop it on the, on the token that you're giving the saving throw to, or here's the, the radiant damage. Really nice. So uh, the spells are parsed for damage and attacks, saving throws, etc. Uh, now let's go to our level one spells, and we also get some domain spells too for being life. So we need we need to look at that. We'll go back to our life domain, which is right here. So we get uh, at first level we get cure wounds for free and bless, which is really nice. So we'll we'll kind of uh, turn these off. We'll just put these back to to all. And we'll use our search box for bless. Very good. And it'll divide it to first level. See, it, it adds a, a little divider there for first level. And then we also get uh, healing. So we'll, we'll take our, our uh, let's see, cure wounds. I'm sorry about that. Not healing word. But we get cure wounds. And these are adjustable by level. So you can spell, you can spend higher spell slots if you'd like. And in these little magnifying boxes here, or in case you need to modify the spell or upgrade it or anything, you can just go ahead and click on the uh, magnifying glass and change the numbers around if you'd like. And that's how you can you know, parse other spells out too. So these are our two domain spells. What I want to do is uh, I want to make sure that I know that they are spells that, that I can only use X amount of time. So uh, let's go to, uh, let's see, uh, let's go to standard. And I'm going to put in parentheses domain because I know these spells don't count towards my, my daily pool of spells. So there we go. Now I get, a amount of, I get an amount of spells for spell casting. Uh, I believe it is my cleric level plus my primary ability score. And I just want to double check that before I start adding a bunch of, of spells and somebody says, Oh, you're doing it wrong. Bah, it's like this. But I just want to I want to double check. So stand by. Because <laughs> I know how l people love to uh, correct you. So here we go. Uh, you prepare a list of spells that are uh, available for your class, choosing from the cleric spell list, obviously. Number of spells equal to your wisdom modifier and your cleric level. Okay, so I was right. Okay, so I'm level one and my wisdom modifier is two, so I will get to I'll get to choose a couple more spells. Three more spells to be exact. So let's go back into the cleric spell list, which will open up our spells on the, the right hand side. We'll use our search again. We'll just use a uh, cleric level one. Voila, there's all of the different spells. I've already got Bless. Now Bane is an awesome spell. So we'll take Bane as one spell. We'll take Healing Word, seeing that we uh, need maybe a range healing spell. And it adds that on there. And for a last one, mm, let's do Guiding Bolt. That's a really good one, too. So we've got some buffs. we got some debuffs. We've got uh, two different types of heals. We've got everything we need, so let's go with Guiding Bolt. That'll give us a, a little bit better of a range spell. And then you can just close those magnifying glasses up. And you can see there's all of the different effects that have been parsed in. So there's the saving throw for Bane. Here's the condition, which is a minus 1d4 to checks and everything else and attacks. Uh, there's your uh, Bless domain that gives you the plus 1 to all of your players. Well, three players that you choose. There's your attack roll for Guiding Bolt. The, the blood drops are damage, and also the little uh, shambling zombies, those are the effects, and the, the healing crosses, those are obviously for the healing word and for the cure wounds. 
So now our character is 100% finished, and it would have taken about 30 minutes anyway if, uh, you know, we weren't uh, discussing everything in detail. So the last thing I want to show you guys, uh, I want to show you guys that, hmm, we can level this up fairly easily as well. So you can do this a couple of ways. You can go back into your your uh, your class sidebar button but you can just you know you can go ahead and just open up the cleric that you had on your macro bar and you just take this drop it on there and look at that you're now a level two cleric and in chat uh, it says it's been added one level cleric to warner your average it takes the average hit points so now my hit points are now 19 uh, then your, uh, let's see, it add channel divinity, uh, and then it added reserve life as well, and turn undead. So and that's that's part of channel divinity. And we'll go up to level three, same thing. Oh, wrong one. There again, now my hit points are 27. You get three hit dice seals, and it looks like uh, it added one more class. Now, when you go to level four, you'll notice a couple of things. You'll notice that it will you'll notice that you'll now get some more domain spells which should have happened at level three and of course you get more spell slots as you get higher in level uh, now at level four you get to choose an ability score improvement because basically all of the different classes in 5e they get an ability score improvement at four so uh, we will say that we'll take our constitution to uh, 18 and we'll take our wisdom to 16 and that'll give us a couple more mods which adjust all of our hit points even more it'll the wisdom will adjust our uh, any uh, spell attack roll it will affect our our uh, saving throw dc it will affect the amount of spells that we can have in our spell pool as well so you know the more that you add the more levels that you add it you just you know you just look at the the chat and it'll tell you everything that it adds for every level so that's that's how you make a character in D and D fifth edition. I mean, it is it is super simple. Uh, all of the legwork has been done for you. All of the calculations. Uh, we can also do one more level to five. Now check this out. When you take the cleric, put it on level five, you'll notice that the base proficiency goes up from two to three, and you'll notice on your actions instead of a plus four to hit, now you're plus five because you're proficient with those weapons so the base proficiency is automatically added as well and your base proficiency will go up to a i believe a plus six at some point by like 17 or 18 so and fantasy grounds will keep track of that for you so all right everybody that's that's everything you need to know about creating a character in D D fifth edition 